Good evening, everybody. Uh, we call to this to order this uh, meeting of the Vader City Council. Uh, the date is May 10th, 2018, and the time is 6.08 p.m. Roll call. Okay. Judy Costello? Here. Jason Daly? Here. Joe Shy? Here. Mike Parsons? Here. Leona Sander Hunter? Here. And again, the mayor has asked to be excused. So. Absolutely. Uh, we will not do Pledge of Allegiance. We did that a little bit ago at our workshop. <coughs> the mayor's report. I don't have anything. Jill, do you hear anything from the mayor for the report? No. Oh, all right. Moving on to council reports. Council folks? I would like to seriously thank everybody that um, helped and participated. I was involved in the May Day Parade. Wait, I was wait absolutely you were on that. I was going to say that. Mm -hmm. I was absolutely <laughs> thrilled with the whole parade. I, everything. I thought it just went. I don't think it could have gone better. Awesome. You know, the people that worked on it, none of us really knew what we were doing except for maybe Judy. And um, have it pull off that well, um, I was very, very pleased. And I want to thank everybody that came, um, whether you participated or not. I was very pleased with it. I would like to add to that that this was the first year that all five council members were active in the May Day Parade. True. Very so I am proud of all of us for being there and participating and being a part of the event that went off really, really well. Hey, you look very snazzy in your scout uniform. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I enjoy wearing it. Council, Council comments. Mm -hmm. um, three I've got, five I've got. Um, the only other thing it, that I'd like to bring up and maybe we can think about it and then add it to next uh, council meeting <clears throat> is additional dwelling units um, and or accessory dwelling units um, basically there's an issue where um, a person's dad is due to financial reasons or medical reasons, whichever, I'm not sure, but um, that, oh, I'm sorry, what? Nothing? Okay. Um, we want to talk about being able, someone being able to add a dwelling, I wish that guy was still here, like a mini home or an RV or something so that their parents would be able to live on their property um, and uh, and not we need to make the rule so that somebody can live on your property as in parents or so on and so forth to help them out I just said that four times <laughs> in all the same can route I, can I make a suggestion this, that this you add that to our agenda Today or for discussion today? Oh, when it comes time to approve, I don't have a problem with it. Perfect. Jason might. <laughs> okay. So I just wanted to bring that up and get it started so that we can go from there. Um, and I think that that is it. Any other council reports? All right, hearing none, moving on, agenda approval. Sounds like we already had one possible addition. I have an addition I would like to add for tonight as well. It, it came to my attention that we have no follow-up for our courtesy letters to find out if the people have accomplished or completed what we've asked them to do. So I would like tonight to mm. maybe come up with a possible way that we can either attach it, you know, put an addition to the letter that we send out saying please notify City Hall when this is completed. Um, we can send somebody out to confirm it or send out another letter between the two courtesy letters or something to get it okay to come out and confirm that they have in fact completed it before the second letter goes out. Because right now apparently we decided not to do that at some point and I think we need to do that. I don't, I'd hate for somebody to get a second letter and have already done it and going, well, what's the problem here? We've already, we've already done all of this that you asked us to do. 
So and they just didn't come in and say, hey, I so got this done? So let's it as number seven so we can discuss it. But we, okay. need, to, we need to get a, approval from the residents to come and, and have somebody come and confirm that it's done or whatever we need to do. Um, so we'll talk about it when we get when we get there. So yeah. so number, I didn't hear an official number six. So six. It would be the ADUs. Okay. ADU. Six is a, the dwelling units. Yep. And then seven would be... Courtesy letter discussion. Correct. Okay. And if we could add signage to number eight, it will be very brief. Just, just signage. Yes, please. Number eight signage. Signs signage. Thank you. Any anything else? Or do we have a motion to approve the agenda plus those three? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda plus adding um, number six, the ADUs, number seven, the courtesy letter, and number eight, signage for May 10th, 2018. We have a motion by Mr. Parsons to approve the agenda with those three additions. Do we have a second? I'll second. Seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Minutes approval. I make a motion to approve the minutes of April 26, 2018 as written. We have a motion by Mr. Costello to approve the minutes. Do we have a second? I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Daly. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Voucher approval. I'll make a motion to approve the vouchers for the first half of May 2018 at $25,938.99. We have a motion by Mr. Parsons to approve the vouchers as written. Do we have a second? I'll second. Seconded by Ms. Costello. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Sheriff's report. April, you had, we had uh, 283 contacts, uh, three calls on shift, 13 calls off shift, 13 traffic stops, one infraction, and one misdemeanor arrest. There was uh, three crimes, uh, two burglaries, and a trespass. I'm not a uh, alarm specialist, but <coughs> we cleared the burglaries and the trespass. Number one with our canine was one way we cleared it, but also the person that, that had the burglary had the alarm type and I've found it to be 100% reliable, the one that comes over your cell phone that has, instead of having them being monitored, because monitor alarms, you pay for those, but the ones that come over your cell phone, you pay once and their prices are coming down, I know that, but yeah, you pay once and all of those have always been successful for us because the person can call us right away and say, oh yeah, I see someone's inside my house right now. and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what that was cleared by that because the girl called in and said, yes, there's someone in my house right now. And then we got the canine out and chased him to another piece of property and caught him finally. Did he get bit? No, he didn't get bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, was, I was hoping that was the dog bite. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so, so he didn't get bit, no. no. We can only hope. <laughs> I, he is still in jail, though, so. Okay. <laughs> and that's about it. Excellent. Questions? <coughs> Any questions from the council? On, on April the 9th, you talked to 32 of us. What day was that? April 9th is a Monday. Really? I don't, I don't know how they, you know, I don't know who they all contact, but that's the, the contacts I, that they put on, so. All right. Thank you, Mr. Cheeseman. Thank you. All right. Uh, item number one, city of business. Council to consider resolution 11-2018.
award, award to bid to Barcott Construction <laughs> LLC. <clears throat> so this is related to our A Street uh, construction project. Um, our engineering firm, Devin Jackson, um, went through several bids and um, from what I understand, did quite extensive analysis and contacted all of them and went line by line and made sure that, that the, they were all uh, able to do the bid for the price um, they quoted and uh, this was the one that he recommended. And it turns out that they're based in Chehalis according to their address, so they're even a local firm. <coughs> And I can try to answer them. Would you look at line item number three on the bid um, tabulation? <clears throat> oh, my on this one. The um, contractor of choice is going to spend eleven thousand four hundred dollars removing a structure and obstructions on A Street. And the high bidder was going to spend forty thousand. Do you have any idea what that structure is or that obstruction? I thought at first it might be the asphalt, but if you go a little bit farther down, you'll see there's asphalt. I don't know. Okay, well that's a good answer. <laughs> that, that's because I looked out there and didn't really see anything. It's a shed. Anything. That <laughs> sorry, that was bad. Snarky. No, that no, was snarky. That was snarky. That was snarky. That was that was snarky. snarky. No snarky. No sorry. Snarky. You know, I could only I could only guess. It, it that could be referring to all of the old lamp posts. That could be referring to. Oh, possibly. I, I looked and thought maybe sidewalk too, but it's identified elsewhere also. So that was just a question. Whatever yeah. it was, they felt like it was pretty standard. Yeah. Well, and you could see that, and that was. One of the, the least expensive of the four bids. The other, one company mm -hmm. was quoting forty thousand. That's what he said. Forty thousand. That's so, why I yeah. wanted to know how big that building was. Yeah, so, just as a, an obstruction. So, okay. it could be any um, of things. My next question, because I know you're very involved in this, Joe, is who is going to be doing the um, funding, the check disbursements? Is <clears throat> so the way it works is the this this mm -hmm. the city the city pays for it and then is reimbursed by the TIB, correct? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they've reimbursed quite quickly, so. Well, I guess my question is, Jill, is um, I'm the guy that's going to do the demo for the $11,000. Um, I'm going to come and I'm going to turn my bill in, and you're going to verify that and then disperse the check for um, all of these individual contractors? The individual, no, we only issue check to the one contractor, the main contractor, which is Barcott. Okay. Any subcontractors, they do their own private. They, they figure that out amongst themselves. Barcott turns in all, will turn in all of the... Okay, so you're not involved in any certified payroll. You're not going to be no. doing any of the above, because I thought if you were, that's a big, big no. project. Yeah, I've done that before, and it is a huge project. Yeah, no. Okay. okay. You've seen on some of the vouchers that we've already approved, you've seen TIB expenditures, <coughs> and those are, those are checks to um, like the survey, the survey and everything, but that all went to Devin, Devin Jackson's mm, engineering firm. I don't didn't remember it? if they all did on that one. Mo Some of them may have been yeah. paid separately, but they all come through Devin. Yeah. Devin sends them all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's checked. So as a project, the quote project manager. Right. He something. verifies okay. that it's completely Okay. And then the next correctly. question is, um, how much was the actual quote or the actual um, project? Was it seven hundred and fifty, or was that a? Our grant was for five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand. Okay. Because I was just thinking if it was the 700 that I was more than that. Is it? I think it was more than that. It was, a, it was a half a million. I thought it was a quarter, a three quarters of a million. Am I wrong? Because 700,000 went to Devon for the uh, um, engineering work. I thought the engineering work was around 130 or 160. And then he was anticipating the project would be around five. So that's. Uh, Maybe I lost a so. quarter million dollars. Okay. You're not in charge of, of checks, are you? No, jump <laughs> change. I have to. I have to look at what. Seven fifty was what I thought was. I have to look at the, what the original what the yeah, original yeah. grant so, was. So the balance yeah. of that three hundred and thirty dollars, then uh, three hundred thirty thousand, then for the project goes to Devon. 
No. Um, no. The way they have it set up through TID, the, the funding agency, is they have a certain amount set aside for the, the pre-construction work, the planning, which is what Devin has done, the engineering and putting the plans all together and going out to bid and that kind of thing. And then there's a separate amount set aside for the actual construction of the project, and they've approved up to a certain amount. Once the bids come back in, then they adjust. They'll adjust it down to what to get to what actually okay. what the bid is. Yeah, and from what I've heard several times that the TIB doesn't like to spend more on engineering, which would be Devin Devin's part, than thirty percent. So oh. that's kind of capped. So. And then one other question I had was on. Um, the information that, okay, the uh, resolution we have in front of us is the, but you know that one. And on the resolution it says um, section two, and it talks about the mayor authorized to do all of this. Um, and then it says once the city has provided um, the signed contract, obviously. And then the city with proof of, of required insurance and bonding in place. I would assume that, that Devin, those guys would do all of that prior to, and it would be attached it, when he um, signs the contract. This so, is already in, in this document that you have. If you go further I saw back, all of that. it talks yeah. about, it shows their, the Barcott's insurance on all, here. All of his insurance. Stuff. That's, that's why it's already been provided. But yeah, yes, that's why I was yeah. questioning why that was. Yeah, Barcott has a, looks like they've got a million dollar insurance policy. Yeah. So. Yeah, okay. Good. Yes. Uh, what are you going to do about cost overruns? They're factored into the into there. In fact, he talks about it in here that um, that there's um, <coughs> overages built into it. Was it. How did they word that? High pro showing high probability of overage project savings or something. Yeah. So it's been accounted for in the bid. Or in the in the the amount of the grant, so the grant's actually larger than what we're planning on spending. So, yes. What, do you have a start date on this, and um, how long it will take? I said it should be completed within forty-five days of the of the start of the project, and I don't remember exactly when. It says in the it's end soon, end. very very soon. They get twenty days to mobilize and get started yeah. after the signing. So it will be started here in the next. In the next, in yeah, in the next month or two, yeah, and they're supposed to be done sometime in the summer. Okay. So pretty quick. I move to approve resolution eleven two zero one eight, awarding the A Street project to Barcott Construction LLC and authorizing the mayor to execute the contract in the form in the form attached to the resolution. I have a motion by Mr. Parsons to approve resolution 11-2018. Do we have a second? I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Daly. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approving resolution 11-2018, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number two, city business. Council to consider a request for garbage rate increase. Joe, would you like to explain why this is coming up? Um, Please, thank you. I can try. Um, so, Miss. Mr. Um, Cummins. Mr. Cummins um, had, when he came to city council at the end of last year, um, when he was doing the contract extension, uh, had mentioned that he needed to raise the costs a little bit um, because of gas prices and whatnot. Um, and so he, uh, when we approved the contract, that was not written in as part of the contract. The, the rates are actually set by ordinance. And so, uh, but he didn't understand that. And so uh, at the beginning of the year, he made, wrote notice to everybody and, and raised the rates, but that wasn't the proper process to go through. The proper process is to to um, have the ordinance changed. And so he wrote this request 
asking council if we could please raise the rates for the um, for the what what he's asking for. He explained it here. Um, and so if council is okay with that, then what we can do is write up the amendment to the uh, ordinance and have that for you at the next council meeting, um, <clears throat> which is a 55 cent increase. Um, he is also asking something along the lines of having 50, a regular... Sorry, 50 cent increase. 55, if you read further down. It's 55 because he has to go back oh. and credit that additional... <laughs> So okay. he's, he's going to charge 55 cents for the next four and a half years to make up for the six months when it wasn't done correctly? That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take four and a half years for him to make up the months so far this year where he has to credit everybody the 50 cents? Okay. Does that sound right? I'm not a very good math student, but... That sounds a little excessive. So for a year, he, he bills every two months. So he gets six billing cycles a year. So four and a half years would be 24, 25, 26 and a half billing cycles. Um, times five cents. I can't do that in my head. But so. he still charges oh, every month. No. Oh, yes. It, you're right. It's every He's, billing yeah, cycle. So it would be 10 cents. Down. Yeah. So it would be $26. Yeah. It does seem like a, that doesn't exactly yeah. work out. I don't think it should take me four and a half years to <laughs> pay that. Right. To pay that <clears throat> amount back. Well, then council can, if you want to suggest a different rate, um, you're more than welcome to do that. Or if you don't want to entertain this at all, that's up to you. I don't think the 50 cents is bad, but... Um, and actually, 55 cents isn't bad if that's what you just started with, but I think his comment here, the 5 cents will make up for the six months lost over the remaining 4.5 years. Maybe he didn't mean it quite like that. I don't know. I don't know. But he's also asking the council um, possibly set up a regular um, review of the rates uh, in order to... He's, he's suggesting using the consumer price index with an 80% adjustment um, to regularly increase the rates instead of him having to come back and ask for it every year. Um, he's asking if we could tie that into the consumer price index and um, that's, again, something council can decide whether they want to do or not do. Um, I don't know if Mr. Cummins has looked at the what that would be if the consumer price index went down, which it doesn't do very often, but it does do, which would mean he would have to, the rates would lower if they did that. Um, I, don't know. I think he's just looking for a way to regularly do a small, reasonable increase to cover costs. So um, it's, it's 80, just his suggestion. 80% adjustment on what exactly? It's a good question. I think he's talking about 80% um, of whatever the change is, whatever the increase in the consumer price index, but honestly, I'm, I'm not sure I totally understand it myself. I am but, very confused by the letter along with my um, bi-monthly garbage bill I get. So, <laughs> having said that, <laughs> I like Jeff. I have no problem that he wants an extra 50 cents or whatever. So what is the reasonable way to work this out so that we don't have to take four years to, to figure this out? Because I'm sure Jeff is trying to make this all happy for us, but like I said, I'm still being billed for last August on one of my garbage bills. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's, it's, uh, my bills are just crazy. Yeah. So, so anyway, what's the logical? What's the logical He's a great garbage man. He's not a great. No, he's not a great bookkeeper. If, if, so what's the? I, I'm not sure if I like the idea of tying it to the consumer price index. I think that the city council should should be the be the decider each time. If, I mean, it's, instead of just having it go up with 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 inflation, um, even at a reduced rate um, at the eighty percent, but still. Um, but once again, I don't have a problem approving approving his fifty five cents. Um, but the consumer price index, not so much. Yeah. 
I don't have a problem with the 55 cents. My problem is that it started out 50 cents, and now we're going to pay 55 cents for four and a half years to make up for six months. Yeah, I have to. I, I want five minutes to figure that out. <laughs> I think we have a we have a audience. Yes. Fifty cents for six months, three dollars. Isn't that? Pardon me. If he, he's going to have to be. Isn't that only three dollars that everybody's? It might be, but it, but he's that's why he's only asking for five extra cents per billing cycle why for the just put three to three dollars oh, no. on the next bill. I would rather do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather yeah. say that. I don't know if we can do that legally the way the us. Uh, Again, a one it's a time state regulation fee. that you yeah. have because you have to notify. I don't know if you can do that. I, do a one time bump to yeah. to kind of back charge people. You have to notify them from this point forward. We're billing. We can't. I don't think garbage has a variety of. Yeah, they have a lot of their own regulations. <laughs> there's trash. An, there's an entire yeah. set of state guidelines mm -hmm. for trash mm -hmm. and solid waste disposal and the regulation districts and all kinds of stuff that I've learned over the last seven years that you just don't want to, don't, oh. yeah, so. Well, how will we deal with this credit? Anyway. I'm, once again, like I said, I'm 55 cents, I'm... If we do 55 years, cents... He's going to have to deal with the credit himself, but as far as yeah. going forward... Yeah. So we'll but if we just give him 55 cents... Then give him whatever. Cents if you wanted, or well, you know. next year he's going to come and ask for another little percentage raise too. So yeah, and maybe we're paying off the six <laughs> months here, <Yeah. laughs> four and a half years. So what's going to happen? <laughs> Oh, no. I'm going to send you no. next year. You I guys can say no because we already yeah. gave you that extra five cents. I would suggest you know this trying to trying to like figure this out for four and a half years for the just the people that are paying garbage now and not the people that come on it. it would, yeah. You know that's just a most uh, a nightmare. So um, yeah, and no uh, on the increase. Yeah, so in debt. I don't mind. Right? I don't. I I know the prices. Because of gas and insurances and cost of living, they need to go up a little bit on things. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so I'm with Joe on the on the. Uh, I'm okay with the, the fifty five cent fifty cent increase, which is what we were supposed to get in the first place. But he wants fifty five cents. They can't have 55 you know, cents. <laughs> that 5 cents is because of his error, not because of ours. It is his error. So you're going to ask, okay. So that we're going to direct our city clerk to do in the, in the next two weeks to put a contract together with a 50 cent only increase? Mm -hmm. I'm happy to put a tip jar out there with three bucks in it. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> but I do not want to spend four and a half years paying this off. Well, next week when he drives by, you can walk out with yeah. your... <laughs> That's, uh, I guess, a little bit on, on his part. Okay. And no on the consumer okay. rate. No on the consumer rate. All right. Do, do you want to uh, include anything that requires the council like at budget time or whatever to reevaluate? Or do you want to just leave that? Leave it's up to him right? currently, up, right? Leave it up to him. I believe so. Yeah. That's the way we've been operating so far. Yeah. Well, don't we have a three-year contract with him? Is it three? He, wanted, he wanted like five, yeah. and we said yeah. no, and we just did three. And okay. I think we did three, so right. he's yeah. not going to be around for another three years to, to do the increase, is he? The four and a half years? No, I'm talking the 50 cents. Years. We were just saying he <coughs> come back to us next year right. for an increase, but sure. he doesn't get to because he's got a three-year contract. Or is that just his for contract doesn't is doesn't state what money. the rates are. He doesn't cover That's the separate. money. Yeah. That's just that yeah. he is in he is yeah, our garbage man. Yes. Oh, right. oh right. okay. I missed that. Okay. So he would come to us again and request okay. another request. Okay. Well I'm okay with that too. Okay. So that that's it. Should we do a motion? I don't think so. I think if you guys just tell me that's the direction you want, then I can um, okay. get the ordinance ready for you and have it for you at the next council right. meeting. So yes, an ordinance for fifty cent per month increase, not backdated. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. No consumer yeah, price to the next. Okay, all right. Any other discussion on item number two?
he doesn't pick up our garbage, we'll go home. <laughs> You tape a couple quarters to the garbage can. I'll stand out there with that nickel. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm just going for the three bucks. Yeah, exactly. Get it over with. <laughs> All right. Moving on to item number three: update on brush pile removal. I believe there is a letter from T. Jags, Mr. Parsons. If you, you've been, uh, you've been a champion him. of the brush pile. I talked to him the other day, um, and I haven't even told you this. I called him on something different, and I said, "Hey, how's that pile going?" And I found out about this um, and I said well if we extend this how about if we open it up so that we can start putting stuff out there and you take whatever we put out there that's extra and he was like I don't have a problem with that so we can open it back up continue to put out there and then he will um, still take whatever is out there because of the time frame he he said that when he first put the when he first put the uh, offer in he was slow and then he's gotten a couple big contracts and he's just is there room busy is there enough room for people to put some I thought that was the I've been issue. down there in a long time so there's a little bit of room down there I mean I don't know if we want to advertise it or just open it up and yeah. Well, well, let whoever. We have people calling on a regular basis saying, yeah. "Is it open? Is it open? Is it open?" Yeah. So. And so I think that if they call or whatever, we just open it up and go with it that way. Are, are we doing that? Opening it up? Uh, Immediately. Monitored. Oh, not right now because we don't have anything to. Um, we don't have just any like of that set up. Just like it was before. Yeah. And, and what happens if at the end of June he says, "Well, I can't, I can't do it till July now," and then we've got all this added. Um, and the tractor can't get down to the sewer or whatever. And, yeah. See, I really uh, hesitate well, doing that. Open yeah. up because I know two residents right now. They have full blown trees cut up in their front yard, ready to take down there. They're waiting for that gate to open, uh, and they could really overwhelm that with just those two. Yeah, I think it would need to be at least monitored to make sure that we don't. I think this is a very nice of it, and. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't, it's been changed so many times, I just don't trust that it will actually happen at the end of June. And I'd rather leave it locked. I would rather leave it locked too, and if it happens, it happens. If it, I think by the end of June, though, if it doesn't happen, we need to look yeah, somewhere else. Somewhere elsewhere, yeah. I think we've given, uh, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. I realize it's not his fault. Yeah. And understandably, it's spring, so everything is overwhelmed at this, this yeah. time of year. But, you know, on the other hand, people can now get their free dump from, you know, the Lewis County dump site. So, you know, they can go online, print that out, get a thousand pounds of <coughs> dump right now. So it's not like it's really hurting them at this, right, this point that they can't take care of it. It's just a distance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can drag a, I can drag a tree down the, down the street. Throw it in the brush pile, but I can't do that all the way to the <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to. <laughs> you know what I mean. It's out the back of the truck. Okay, so I hear leaving the site closed for now and waiting until the end of June. And then at the, the end consensus? of June, we make other decisions. Okay. Is Hopefully, okay? we don't have to. Is that okay, Mike? Yeah, that's fine with me. I, uh, but if you talk to him, I think it was very nice of him to offer to let us um, dump that he would pick that up in addition. I'm just afraid of the mess that we would um, create. Create, like Jason said, especially this time of year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any, any other discussion? We said on we the... wanted it done by May. Sorry, John. No, it's all right. We said we wanted it There's done by May. It's just next May, right? <laughs> No. Yeah. Oh. Seems that way. No. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. So. Okay. Any other discussion? Mike. Nope. Okay. Uh, so we need to get back to them because uh, let yes. us know if there's future doing business with them. So they're they're uh, kind of yeah. concerned that they that they've tarnished uh, their reputation with us. So yeah, gotta get back to them. Say we understand, but yeah. yeah. However. This is it. Yeah, that's that's right. Right. <laughs> and was, was there a date? Uh, in the May. End, end of June. June. That's what he said. End of June. Okay, end of June. The 
completion date. Yeah, his his the stuff that he has that I that I've been told that he has, it's not going to take him long. He's got some big equipment. So if he could have it all, I was thinking beginning of June, but this letter says the completion date will be the end of June, so that might not be so bad. Yeah. <clears throat> Next. Next. Are we sure? <laughs> <laughs> all right, moving on to item number four, update on home-based business workshop. <clears throat> so we just had a big workshop about that. Uh, we had some direction going forward already selected with the, uh, the uh, volunteers that are going to sit on a... Uh, committee to bring more information to the council. Um, is there anything else you'd like to talk about right now? I think no. two an hour and a half was good. I yeah. think we I think we hashed it out pretty good. Yeah. Just cool. Okay. Very good then. Moving on to item number five: update on Fourth of July celebration. At our last meeting, um, the city had decided not to be. Um, a part of any 4th of July celebration um, this year, um, but it is on our agenda again. <laughs> we yes. said that was my question. Thank you, Joe. We <laughs> said that we probably wouldn't, oh. and let's leave it off because it's probably skunked, but it is not skunked. <laughs> it is going to happen. Um, I've got the same deal that the gentleman before had. Um, I have a, uh, the shooter is, he's actually not a, a licensed pyrotechnician in Washington, is in Oregon, but the, the fireworks that we get are an I-4, which means it's consumer grade fireworks, just like the other guy did. Um, we have uh, insurance source that looks like instead of a couple thousand dollars, could be a few hundred dollars. Um, and um, it will be a, instead of a 45 minute show with lots of gaps, it'll probably be a 30 minute show with no dark sky whatsoever for 30 minutes. Um, and um, looks like we've got everything in line to make it go forward. Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> Boom. No. So I, yeah. <laughs> so um, I've talked with the state, uh, state patrol. Um, I talked with there at the state patrol who they do the fireworks things because I was looking into um, seeing what I would have to do to get my retail license so that I could get the same deal that the last guy got and um, I while I was doing that I thought and I found out about it on the last day to submit that license so I just called the supplier um, Jake's fireworks in Winlock and he said, I'll give you that deal, no problem. So we've got the fireworks. We've got, um, uh, oh, and because the person that did it in the past was a licensed retailer, he had a lot of restrictions because he was a retailer of the fireworks. And because we don't have to be a retailer, we don't have a lot of those restrictions. Um, so we've got the price. The uh, um, As far as the permit for the display, it says on their website, permit for display. So I called and Roberto Rodriguez is the person I talked to there. And he said if they are I-4 fireworks, you do not need a display permit. So we are good there. Um, that's about it. Any questions? Oh, are you planning so on charging funny. for attendance? Are you planning on, is there going to be fees? We're not trying for people to go to it? No, definitely not. 
The only people um, more than likely what will happen um, is vendors uh, will get charged to set up there, um, which will be pretty <coughs> minimal, but we still want to charge for those. Um, other than that, everything else should, um, there will be, um, the vendors are going to charge people, <coughs> but that's part of bringing money into, into town. So, um, go ahead. Where will um, <coughs> the person shooting the fireworks be assembling these? Um, Does he have a home? Does he have a... Most of it's going to be done at Jake's Fireworks. Assembled on the trailer? What's that? How, how, will, how will this get on the back of the flatbed trailer to get shot? It that won't be on air. the back of a flatbed trailer. <coughs> He's going to... What's that? I'm sure they have it all figured out. Yeah, just, he has, just... there, there's no fuses involved with these. They're all electronic <laughs> boards. So um, everything is done electronically. He'll wire it all up beforehand. Oh, well, almost wire it up beforehand. And then the day of, he sets it out, wires, finishes up the wiring, and... So that's my question, is where is he doing all his wiring? Right, that was the, that was the concern before, was yes, that the, the storage for multiple days or weeks in advance within yeah. the city limits. Because it takes like three, yeah. it takes a good week for Reggie to wire all of that up on the flatbed trailers um, and get it ready to shoot off. And so my question is, is where is this person going to be setting all of that up? Part of it is going to be done at Jake's. At their place. Well, I find that very interesting. Go ahead. That's what they talked about. Okay. So um, the fireworks will be there, though, until the day of the event. They'll be there until the day of the event. But the other thing about that is Reggie, or I'm sorry, the former guy was a retailer of fireworks. Because he be had to be, was told to be, by the city of Vader. No. Okay, I've okay. No more conversation from me then on this. Yes, he, I have no more conversation. So the only thing I, I the only thing I knew or heard of was that he was a retailer so he could get price. That was all that I knew. Okay. But, but because of that, um, we're we're going to if he's not we're not If they have to be stored for, it'll probably be two or three days, and more than likely it will be in a metal container at the site. So, yes. I think it's great that you're doing 4th of July because I think that was a really nice program that we had. But you had all these requirements for the previous man to do, and he, you know, it was my understanding from my memory that he was told during one of the meetings that he had to be a retailer to get the price, and he had to be licensed, and he had to be certified, and he had to do it, all these different restrictions. I understand those things, but now did all those go away? He doesn't have to be licensed, he doesn't have to be certified, doesn't have to be a re retailer, he doesn't have to... And how can you get insurance for two hundred dollars when it was seventeen twenty seven or whatever? Because we're getting it through a through a, through a firework company is where the insurance is coming from, and that the insurance still has to be verified through our insurance to make sure that it's what exactly we need. But they're um, they were saying it's and it's actually a different. Than Jake's, because Jake's offers firework insurance also, but it's actually through a company called Wolverine, um, is who is going to do the fire, the firework insurance on it. So. So all the other requirements go away. You don't have to do all that stuff.
He was never given those requirements. Well, the only, re the only the requirement, the only requirement he had to meet was where he was storing no, the fire. During one of the city council meetings, way back, I don't know, a year or so ago, it was it was said that he had to be certified by a certain amount of time. They were going to give him one year to do it, and or an extra year to do it because he wasn't yet. That was one of the things that was talked about. I know I drink, but I mean, I didn't I, pick that up. I, I don't recall that. I'm not saying it didn't happen because I'm just saying I don't Anybody recall. Else? But yeah. but we have we found out last year that you don't have to be a certified pyrotechnics operator to shoot off mm -hmm. the, and that's the what conservative rate, and that's why Because we were like, you need to be certified to shoot them off, and then, then they found out that since we were shooting that's off that. a certain, yeah, mm -hmm. a certain type of them that you didn't have to be. Yeah. But this year... But he still had to have a, a space built specifically to their specifications to store them. But because he was a retailer, mm -hmm. that's and this year they just won't let him store it in a residential area. He wanted him to store it at the school at the in the metal building, right. and he didn't want to do that. Okay. So the question on the table is, is the council interested in sponsoring a 4th of July event? And if so, then I suppose we need to direct our city clerk to make sure all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted before we go forward. I personally think it was a great addition to, to the town. The town loved it. Um, I'm going I'm to I'm go for the 4th of July thing. If, I mean, we still have the, the 30 Four hundred dollars set aside for three thousand for fireworks or three thousand. So I mean, if that's what it's going to take, I think I don't know if if the person before had some uh, donations that might be able to be acquired. Also, I don't know, but I'm gonna go for uh, <coughs> um, another event in Vader. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I last year I had a lot of fun. My kids had a ton of fun down there. I remember you, you were having a ton of fun. Yeah, you really were. Um, and so um, I'd love to see the event as well if, if all of the red tape, as it were, could be could we work through. Mm -hmm. So who's in charge of it? So far I've been doing all, the, all of this. So far, I've done this, and um, the um, I was going to talk <coughs> with the city with Jill and find out if um, if Black Tie was to do it as a promoter, if that changes any of the requirements, so that I can make decisions faster and just get it done or if it is going to go through the city, or how um, that should go. Because one of, the, one of the issues is charging vendors. Because it's a city event. That's the carnival side of things. Yes. And the there's the fireworks side of things. Yep. And then there's the but the whole event <coughs> is the city's event right now. And so if you're, if you're going to be a vendor, the city can only charge you ten dollars because that's their. I found out some additional information about that that we may be. Able. Anyways, um, and so um, we're going to talk about that. And but they, this at the point was the city could only charge ten dollars, and I would like to charge more than ten dollars. You know, I don't see a problem with a vendor paying a hundred dollars to fifty to a hundred dollars. <laughs> to be there that's you know it all depends yeah that's cheap 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 i won't be there wow i didn't know that i've never yeah. been at one of these so well that's a that's i suppose a, a, that's another something that you have to come back to us with yeah because, it's another side of things um, i'm i'm not into having a large company come in and and overcharge for vending and do an event that 
you know, you want your locals to be able to come in and share their, share their stuff with the locals. And that would be overpricing it and pricing everybody out. Well, you know, we can also do some type of... My, my idea on the 4th of July is not putting it on the budget next year. It should pay for itself. Um, and so maybe we can do residents, and we can talk about this, but residents um, of Vader can have a free spot with the, just the $10 thing. Um, but if we brought, Vader, if we bought, brought other re, um, vendors in from out of town to do their stuff, you have a resident, non-resident fee? Yeah. Yeah, that won't work either. But I, I understand. But um, why don't we just try to get the event off the ground? Yeah, we can with, discuss those specifics, I suppose. Yeah. So who would I direct somebody to if they were interested in being a vendor? Would it be you or the city clerk? Or? Be right now it hasn't been decided yet. Yeah. So that's what I'm asking. Who? We don't know yet. We don't know. We're still working on it. You want to do it tonight? Mm -hmm. or you know, My... Well, we will have to we'll have to talk about it because my ideas are uh, a lot different than obviously a lot different than yours. I want to make it an event that brings money into the town to make money, and I want to make it an event. Um, not that the other one wasn't an event, but I don't think, like I said, I don't think that we should have to. A 4th of July celebration like that should fund itself and be able to take care of itself. So, Are you thinking then that it's not going to be a city event next year? It'll be a private entity event? I have no outside. idea. No idea. And is that, is that your goal? I'm good I don't, with that. I don't, I don't, with that. I don't think... Well, I want the money to go to the city. Oh. I'm not talking about me charging $100 I, I or... Our, the people charging a hundred dollars, whoever does it, yeah. that goes into their pocket. I want the money to go into the city, but it has to be ran like a business into a Fourth of July fund. Into a Fourth of July fund. Well, that's what the uh, May Day people did. They collected money this year that goes to next year's celebration, mm -hmm. yep. and they all put it somewhere. Um, and they're not making money off of it. So mm -hmm. that's what I was asking. You want it to be able to support itself. I want it to support outside itself. Outside of the city. Yes. Okay, so then it would not be a city event. Unless, this, unless it's... That's what we've got to talk about. If the city can run it, if it can be ran through the city, great. Then I don't have to worry about, for instance, me. I don't have to worry about insurance. Because okay. if it's... If, if Black Tie was a promoter of it, then... Black Tie would have to be paying for the insurance type of a thing. So that's all different variables. But for tonight, the main thing is, one, do we want the 4th of July celebration? And, um, well, that is, I guess that's the big <laughs> thing right there. I mean, we all wanted it. But are you going to, I mean, last year we had bouncy houses for the kids and the different games for the kids and the dunk tank for the kids. Is all of that, are there going to be events for their little things for the kids to do? That That's definitely, as long as we can find them. I know that bounce houses are getting harder and harder because insurance on bounce houses skyrocketed. And I'm not going to have any uh, vendor there that doesn't have insurance or can't qualify into the city's insurance program. Um, you know, so, yeah, I want to have stuff for the kids. That's the main thing is having stuff for the kids, having some food booths, some ice cream booths, shaved ice booths. Um, well, so. I'm, once again, I'm, I'm all for it, and I would not have a problem asking our city clerk to try to figure out how to, if it's even feasible at this point. So it, do, it does need to be, we've decided that it does, the fireworks portion needs to be a city event, right? If we're going to give I don't know. money to a fireworks show, it's, 
isn't that the a city, city event? sponsor it without it being a city event. The question is whether Jake's Fireworks will still give us that price if it's not a city event or right. if it, I, I don't know that they've said anything different, but okay. uh, there's more details we haven't gotten into yet. This is all pretty new, so. What direction do you need from us if we want to say, Are let's go for it? Are you support of getting the event, working on the event, putting it together? Is that money still available? It's mm -hmm. in the budget for it. Are you okay mm -hmm. with that? Then let's move forward and we'll have a lot more information for you, I think, at the next council meeting. Okay. So we can work out some more of the details. I'm not for it. <clears throat> Why? Um, I think that I think that the previous person, um, and I'll just use the word poo-pooed, got poo-pooed on. And I'm very sensitive to that. Um, for the last four years, I've helped those folks do that. And I think that there were a lot of restrictions put on him. And now all of a sudden, they've just poofed, disappeared, or made so simple. And so, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with the fireworks, entertainment for the community, and the whole thing. But I think, I think we've just um, snubbed our noses at one of our community members who really I, did a lot of work on it. And, and I, I disagree with that part of it. So that's just my feelings. I kind of feel like we're stabbing it in the back. Well, it's a very hurtful thing so, to me. So here's here and boast about it. That's all. It's what? He did a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. Last year was he, absolutely. absolutely amazing. Absolutely. And he like, did great. And when I talked to him, I spent two hours talking to him, trying to get him to say yes to do it. And I, I got it at one point, I got him to say, I will do it if this and this and this get taken care of. And then it wasn't like three days later, he came to city council and said he's not doing it, period. So it was either, and I told him I didn't want to do it unless he did the fireworks because I didn't want to have to deal with it. But once it was gone and I heard people saying, that's sad, that really sucks that we're not going to have 4th of July here. I figured, let me see what I can figure out. So I just made a couple phone calls and things started happening. And um, the... Uh, and all the same requirements are being made for this as they were for him. I don't understand why you're saying that all of a sudden they're gone. They're not. He's just meeting them. He's meeting the requirements and he's not fighting them. Um, they're all the same requirements. He's just finding a way around, you know, getting it done. Yeah, so I, I it's just a per, that's my personal. I, I feel the same way, you know. I, I feel I, I feel like we've just stabbed him. I, I feel I feel very hurtful over it, and and I feel very sad sitting up here that this is what we're going to do. Yeah, the last time I I talked with I talked with Reggie as well in person, and the last conversation we had was I was going to help figure out ways to overcome the issues. And he had a list of things he was going to do. I had a list of things I was going to do. And then the next thing I heard was that he, he had quit before any of those had been completed. So yeah. um, I, I feel the same way as you do, but I also really would like to have a 4th of July event. Okay, well, that's... I'm just one person up here. So... Do we want to direct I'd like the city to clerk direct to, to find more information and then maybe at the next council meeting we can okay. actually have a maybe a, a final decision on it? If it's even if it's even possible. Definitely. Okay. I'm not signed up, but may I yeah, ask absolutely, a Linda. question? If there's three thousand dollars in the budget for 4th of July that's in the city's budget, why wouldn't that 3000 be spent on a 4th of July celebration for this year? That's, that's how we're going to buy the fireworks. That's what it was. Between interns and fireworks, it was never enough, so Reggie always went out and got donations from people. He worked, ran his tail off getting donations mm -hmm. to try to recoup, and they spent out of pocket. They spent a lot out of pocket. <coughs> okay. I also are in favor of finding out if if we can meet the requirements. And then we'll have it on the agenda next meet, meeting. Any other discussion right now? 
All right, item number six. Um, this was added onto the agenda. Accessory dwelling units. Do you want me to go over what I mm -hmm. said earlier? Or um, Lewis County has a accessory dwelling unit um, flyer that they have that has a lot of good information in it and um, the main thing for it is to um, open it up to help um, our residents that have um, I've already said it three times so I don't know why I'm saying it again um, that have dependent parents or health parents or financial problems or whatever it is there's uh, but this has a great um, purpose and for it so I wanted to see it started at least so mm -hmm. that we can get it going can I add a little clarity mm -hmm. I don't know if it's necessary but um, so right now the way the city regulations are is that you are there's no allowance for having a second dwelling unit or an accessory dwelling unit on a piece of property you can only have one uh, on one property and that includes using an RV as a, a unit right now uh, as a dwelling unit right now RVs are not allowed in any situation to be um, are not authorized to be lived in and so this is what he's talking about is either adding a, a small you know single unit um, to your property or possibly an RV uh, being able to use an RV in some circumstances um, to to live in for maybe a, a certain amount of time or for a certain particular reason or make, make some kind of regulations that would allow that for certain circumstances. And so that's what, it's kind of like along the same vein as the home-based business where the city can make regulations to allow this if they want to. They don't have to, but they can if they want to and it would require, you know, writing, um, writing a, a change to the development code that allows that type of use on your property. So the question is, is council interested in looking into that and well, I think it's a great idea for the county. I don't know. I think it's uh, I think it's something that we've had a problem and an issue with in our town for a long time. And um, I think it's something that would be abused in, in no time. <clears throat> That's just my opinion. I think that the... Uh, um, I think that they need to be permitted would be a way, I think that's how they do it, right? Is a, is a permit has to be um, issued to, uh, to do it so that we can. I have a question. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm staring at a piece of paper. Uh, one clarification, <laughs> actually in the city of Bayer, there is an ordinance that if you have an active building permit, you can live in uh, an RV for a certain amount of time. I think it's six months or something or three months. So that is allowed currently. But are you uh, thinking just family members uh, that are having a financial difficulty or need extra help? Is that what you're... That's what I'm... That's what... The majority of it is family members. Yes. Taking care of your parents type of a thing. Or, or your adult child that needs help or okay. whatever. But yeah. Well, my thought about that is, is I think we should allow it for, for someone who comes to us, stands up there, gives their presentation, and maybe we go out and look at the scenario, and then um, do a variance, <coughs> or and I'm not sure what the word would be, to add a conditional use of something. Oh. Now, we, now, now, we're talking about um, a person who's whose mother needs assistance and they live in the trailer or whatever, in a mobile mm -hmm. home or motor home next or door a, to them. Or a mini home is brought or, or in. Whatever, or whatever, but they whatever. live there. Um, however, in our community, we have multitudes of people living like that. That doesn't seem to be a problem and we blatantly allow it. And 
but we're so but the but zoning we are allowing it because I will I will not mention any names but we have a huge amount of people living and they've been there for one year they have no water they have no sewer they have a porta potty and they've just planted a garden with a scarecrow now that is blatantly giving them permission to do this and so without any rhyme or reason and I've heard all kinds of reasons why so. Oh, I'm trying to get well, there is a rhyme or reason, though. There's how many? a difference between what you're, the situation you're talking about. There's a small difference. But there is a difference between that and somebody who's been doing it for eight years and has moved from one place to the other and knows. You know what but I it, mean? The difference is that, that the people that you were talking about that have been there for almost a year now is that they were trying to cooperate and get the right regulations and the right approval through the city. However, in the last six months, that communication has stopped. Also, in the last six months, the city council has told us they don't want us to do any more code enforcement. Oh, I so, can't wait, Jill, till we get to line <laughs> item so, number. So that's another, I'm just, that's the reason why nothing has been done at this point. Um, and we, there's several others that are in line that have been doing it a lot longer that are also on the list that need to be addressed. But, you know, every time we do, people end up trying to sue the city and there goes, you know, our funds for code enforcement. So it's, it's a tricky situation. I mean, that's something well, that needs to be addressed. And, and it has been talked about a lot, at least in those walls. Uh, between the mayor and myself and some other council members, I think as well, have had conversations about it from time to time, about the, the different issues, and that it's not being ignored, it's not being allowed in the sense that we're saying, who cares? I think that there's some disconnect between what needs to be happening and, with the administration and the council's directives. I think that there's some, there needs to be more I would, communication and... and Respect, respectfully, um, Jill, respectfully, mm -hmm. um, we're never informed. I mean, the particular situation we're talking about without mentioning any names, mm -hmm. that letter was sent out without this council voting on it. And we specifically said two, because as Joe said, if we send out more, we'll be right back in that 14 code things and a huge thing. And yet that went out without even discussion to us. And, and now it is going to create a problem, and it has, obviously. But no, it is going it, to it, get, it is going it's, to get. It hasn't, I don't think that it's created a problem. I think that it's created momentum to, f to figure out a solution for that problem. Which is what the courtesy letters are supposed to do. That's right. The, the, and council members were discussed, did talk to the mayor about who the letters were going to go out to talk you? I've told you to at least twice to go talk to the mayor about it personally. All I can tell you After is what the all letters I can tell were you. sent out. Right, he folks, talked to them the, before. I'm sorry, okay. the, he talked to people before. The, I, the agenda item is accessory dwelling units. Okay, yeah, sorry. And right. So we're here to talk about accessory dwelling units, and if this is something this, the council wants to entertain, um, and well, we if have it the is, courtesy notices on there, so that's what. <laughs> Well, we're going to get to that. Some wonderful so. ideas, but I think we'd have to have several restrictions to it mm -hmm. and guidelines to follow. But I think it's an absolute wonderful um, idea. And then there's a lot of areas that do the the little mother-in-law homes mm -hmm. behind their homes and stuff like that. It, and it's amazing. I mean, you you've got your a grandmother right there to you know to help out yep. who has no husband anymore. I think it's a fabulous idea. This is it's another. Great, yeah. But then it the is. next year it's covered with the tarp, and the next year it's. No, that's why they have to. They have to meet cold. They have to have. But then the, after that, they got their grandkids. You have to have the ability to drop the hammer. Cold doesn't mean anything if we can't enforce it. If we cannot enforce the code, the code doesn't mean anything. Well, there are. If we are restricted to only sending out two nicey nice letters, and we can't do anything about it. <laughs> the code <laughs> isn't going to matter. Right. The code doesn't matter if we can't do something to enforce it. <clears throat> there are a variety of limitations yes. we could put on something like this. That's you great. could not have, for instance, you could say an RV is not allowed, but a tiny home is. You know that kind of thing. You know, per, is it a permanent structure or is it a mobile structure? So there are a variety of options. Um, okay. 
that we could that we could uh, maybe add I, on I, there. I, I like the permitting idea. I mean, to be able to come in and get maybe uh, one year permit and you have to renew it or whatever yes. you know, for your for your parent or whatever. That's a great idea. I think that's a good way to be able to where you can say, okay, no, your trailer is not the code anymore. Right. To do upgrade it or do something. Yeah. So, I um, think that maybe the, even having a set year to like new trailer like a 2010 and up kind of thing or whatever you know make sure that it's not a dilapidated falling apart structure before they move it in there kind of thing so i'm sure there's and i think ways to get around i like the ordinance that we have but i think that this i didn't want to cut that one out but add to it for the situation because i don't want a trailer park next door to my house yeah Sorry, I, didn't make I know. I think it's the city of Gresham. There's a friend at work that talks to me, and they have a, they have a program set up where they allow um, like a tiny home type situation. And if your property is this X Y Z large, they allow this extra structure on there if you meet these meet these requirements. Um, and so I know other cities do do allow. I don't know. Gresham's pretty big, but just for example, it's not out of the question. Um, but we could put all kinds of restrictions on it or case by case. We're small enough, we could go case by case. I think case by case and, um, and yearly. If it's something we want to entertain or look into it more. I think it's a package. It's, 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 it's entertainable. It's another, it's another really big discussion item similar to mm -hmm. the retail spaces. Mm -hmm. It is big, but it's, I could see a lot of people in Bayer um, responding positively towards it because. I think it's a great idea, and I, you know we all have. Well, I'm, most of us have elderly parents, and you know what's going to happen down the road. And my dad's pretty sure I'm just going to move in with my mom. Well, <laughs> you know, hey, Dad. <laughs> all right. But I think it's a great idea. So everyone says it's a great idea. Yes. So now what? Research question. So, yeah, let's. I mean, I got that from Lewis County, um, and I'm not one to recreate the wheel. Just inflate it a little bit. Well, that's a Q and A. That's not an ordinance. Well, the or yeah. I think the ordinance is on the back of it. Okay. Also, isn't it? I have that ordinance number. What's that ordinance number? LCC seventeen. LCC. 17.102.050. Do we need to direct? The city clerk to do anything, or can we research some of this on our own in the next couple of weeks? Since she already has an immense of stuff to do, mm -hmm. immense amount of work to do yes. that we've given them. It's okay. Just not Thank you, Joe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll add it to the agenda for next meeting. Yes. Okay. Done. You know, um, King County, uh, Seattle area. Um, oh, we got these atrocious ordinances that got us in all this financial problems. They have an ordinance up there that they created for people to build these little tiny, tiny homes in their backyards. That And they have like compostable toilets in them and things like that. And um, the homeless are going, some of the people are inviting homeless people to come and live in those homes. But I mean, if, if Seattle can do this mm -hmm. for people and, or their parents, or whomever. It's for whomever, I guess, for the people can do this. So that might be something you could look into to see what they've done mm -hmm. um, and how they brought that about. But it doesn't it's, seem to be a problem up it's there. It's very, very impressive. I mean, these people that were once homeless, mm -hmm. they now have a home. They have more respect for themselves. They respect mm -hmm. the, the home that they're living in. They're now going out and getting but jobs. I mean, and it's all escalated. It's, it's huge. I'm just saying, if King County can do this, if you can borrow ordinances for them for other things, these might not be bad either. Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not too excited about 
homeless camps. Or no, 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 no. I'm homeless. Just, <laughs> oh, my God. Don't get excited. Yeah. They mean homeless. Okay. I'm just saying, you know, that's what they have done. And if they can do that... We yeah. should be able to come up with For something sure. that can help on a smaller see. scale. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. No homes. <laughs> I'm all about the family. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So next next meeting we'll talk about this some more with what we find out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Please. Okay. Uh, moving on then. No. No. We didn't say who was going to find out about the next for this information. Well, I'm going to do some reading on my own. I'm going to do some reading on my own, okay. and I'll share with you. I did I'm, some reading on my own. You did some already. <laughs> I'm going to do some reading on my own. All right, we got it covered. Okay. okay. Homework, uh, people. Homework. We got a homework. Yeah, homework. Don't call it that. Well, I'm done with it, so you can. If call any of it you that. come up with documents that you want copied and given to council, please, I'm more than happy to do that for you. Excellent. We Thank can you. include them in. If we have them on Monday, we can include them in the packet. So. Thank you. Okay. okay. Item 7, courtesy letter discussion. <coughs> okay, this doesn't need to turn into a huge, lengthy, long <laughs> conversation, because we've already discussed this courtesy letter and my bleeding heart, so we don't need to go into that area again. All I, 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 didn't, I wasn't aware that we had no way to check up on the courtesy letters to see if they had completed what we asked them to complete. So I think we need to either add a paragraph on to the first courtesy letter stating, please notify City Hall when you have completed this so that somebody can come out and verify that it's been completed or call and schedule an appointment where somebody can come out and verify it. Very simple, very easy, and it will get done then before the second courtesy letter needs to go on. So just maybe an additional little paragraph. It's not on there? No, no. Oh. We have no right to go check and see if they've done well, it. No, 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 no. No, that's not necessarily the case. I mean, we could still send the building official out, but council specifically stated when they set the when they said that you wanted the two courtesy notices to go out, said you did not want any enforcement action beyond that. We wanted a report. Yeah, it would stop. We could not do anything. So at this point, we have some that have said that they have. Um, a, Follow, you know, follow the regulations and make whatever changes, but we have, we're not supposed to go check on them, <laughs> is the way it was taken by the mayor and myself as far as, as what we oh, felt like council oh, was I trying to direct us to yeah, do. I don't think that's what we so, meant. Because we would have to send the building official out to check on those. We don't have anybody else to do that. Well, we need a way to verify that it's been done before the second letter goes out. Because we don't want to send a second letter out and have them come storming in saying, well, how many letters do I need to get? I've already done what you asked me to do because so much for courtesy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. then it becomes an so issue. So who is it that you want to send to go do that? Because the only person I'm aware of is is our building official. And how much does he cost an hour? Or how much is he going to charge us? an hour plus the trip fee. You see the only one that can do that, that can verify that it's been accomplished? Can we, can't you well, delegate? Can't we delegate someone like uh, Public John, Works or no. the he mayor? Doesn't have any more training in it than I do. I mean, I was the one that was doing that before. I would go out, take a photo, send it to the building official, so he wouldn't have to come out and make a trip fee. He could look at the photos and see what was done and what wasn't okay, done. Okay, so let's have to that. But we just sent out a courtesy letter. I know, I know, but that's what I'm saying. We haven't done the courtesy notices before now, so this is the first time around. But that's what I'm saying is that that's kind of one place that we have a real disconnect, uh, and we kind of have a gap that haven't we haven't figured out how to fill is who is the person on the ground here in the city that lets the building official know when there is a code issue that needs to be addressed and looked at and who is it that goes out and checks to see you know if stuff's done or Toledo just has their maintenance people go out okay. so I don't know why it, because it's a courtesy letter because it hasn't gone into code enforcement as of yet I don't know why say we asked somebody to move two dead vehicles that have weeds growing out of them for example Okay, and John so, could just drive by and so see one of the these. Okay, so one of these is an RV that was connected to utilities, and it's in their backyard uh, or side yard or something. So he would have to walk on their property and go around and look no. to see if it's still connected or not. 
Well, I don't know that you're going to convince the public works employee, and I don't know that you're going to convince the mayor that that's a good idea to send our public works employee out to do code enforcement. And there lies the paragraph that we added <coughs> to the letter stating, you know, once you've completed this, yeah. please call City Hall um, and we'll set up a scheduled time for somebody to come out and verify that it's been completed and then you'll receive no more letters, you know. See, this I think that's a great way to do it, yeah. is to yeah. include it in the letter. The first letter. Yeah. 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 Because if they haven't completed it by the first letter, <laughs> They will complete it after the second nice letter. They will. They will. I have high hopes for these courtesy letters. I know you two just look at each other and you grin. No, he's looking at me telling me to shut my mouth <laughs> no, and I, calm down. I, I think you, you guys had a great idea and, and it's actually done. It's, it's already worked in yeah, some cases. It's yeah, so, it's working. So I, I am absolutely inclined to go along with more of your great ideas. And you know what, so three letters went out. I think if two got accomplished and one's going to fight it, that's not so bad. Two out of three is not bad. We're still winning. And, and really, that third one brought us to this. Yes. And that's what we, you know, if we want to progress to, get, to fix the problem <coughs> so that something else will happen. Yes. So, the, so it worked also. And this resident might be very appreciative that we're trying to find an alternative um, avenue to keep everything in compliance and code and everything else, and we're trying to make everything work, you know. I, I don't know. I don't know the person, but, you know, at least it's an effort. We have a comment? Yes? <laughs> to go along with um, Jill's comment about disconnect, there also seems to be a disconnect between what's happening out in the city and the city council because it didn't seem to be, uh, Mr. Parsons didn't seem to be aware of the third letter that went out when I called no, him about it. I was aware of the third letter. I, but, and. Anyway, <laughs> if you were, you didn't act like it, but I know that some of the others were surprised as well that a third letter went out because they thought only two were going out. So maybe there could be a, a connection that if five letters are going out, the five of you are told that five letters are going out. So somebody doesn't grab you by the lapels and shake you and say, why did you send me this letter? Mm -hmm. You know, you people are kind of the face. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we know this that you're our council town. people. And if someone comes up to you and yells at you about something, you should be aware of what they're talking about. And I, and I still need clarity on how Linda's going to get a letter. I mean, who decides who gets these letters? That's a big issue. Why is that a big issue? I, I, I think they're complaint driven. Well, I have been told this, and yet when you I ask, the there are no complaints against them. Well, the words That's are written. True. Everyone could that get is one right now. Not true. Yeah. There is. I can give you a copy of it right now. I know exactly one of the other, and I know one of the other ones. Uh, every neighbor in all four sides of them complained to the city yes. about them, and and they'd have to clean up their their property mm -hmm. because of the letter. Well, one of the other letters. But I agree that the council needs to know more about what's going on with the code enforcement activity. I think there's got to be a better way to communicate so that. You guys know the hard part is the only time we ever seem to all get together is at a council meeting. That's not really the appropriate time to say, we sent a letter to this person and that person. You know, don't really want to publicize that. And we shouldn't have to wait to two weeks world. to send out the next letter if there's a problem. Right, right. However, um, so that that's actually something the mayor and I talked about today uh, in our when we met this morning. Um, and the, the question of who is supposed to say, okay, a, courtesy, or a letter needs to go out or code enforcement needs to happen, the way the ordinance is written, it says the city clerk will do it. That is what council approved, was direct, making the city clerk be responsible for that. Now, you guys have said since then, at the end of last year, you don't want me doing it, so I haven't been doing it. The mayor has kind of taken over that. We still need to change the ordinance. But the mayor doesn't want to take on that responsibility either. He really, I mean, in a bigger city, you would see that as part of a planning and building department. You would have somebody that's the code enforcement officer who would kind of be the person in charge of looking at those things and deciding whether it was based on complaints, whether it was based on their own drive-bys, just seeing something or, you know, whatever. They would be the person deciding. We don't have that person here. 
And that's really kind of a, a, a challenge because we I think that that would really help us to have somebody who is uh, not personally connected to eat, to the members of the of the community that can be like a, a, a neutral person and can look at things and make those make those decisions and say okay yeah we need to send the building official out to check this out or we need to send a letter here but. I don't know who's supposed to do that. I don't have those answers, but I do agree that that is a huge hole in our process that we have that, that we need to fix. So, well, I think eventually these courtesy letters will clean out the file that's there, and then you can just do it as they come in, and we won't have this backlog. It won't be an issue of eating the mighty mole. You can just say, oh, this came in, oh, it was a courtesy letter, just like that. And there's just that roses easy. and rainbows yeah. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait. We had two, we have a couple comments out here. Yeah. Julie, you had one. My thing is that when you guys are having an issue about the courtesy letters going out and no one really knowing about it, maybe there could be um, a list drawn up and given to the city council at the yeah. time those are done. That way you're all made aware of it. It can be tossed in your inbox. It doesn't have to be publicized. Yeah. So um, the mayor could, could be writing it up or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. It could be a handwritten thing. It doesn't have to be typed, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That way, then you guys would all know about it, and you wouldn't get, you know, shaken or whatever by some idiot. <laughs> so. yeah. Yeah. Donna, you had a question. I do. Um, if if these are driven by um, community member complaints, they actually come in here physically and fill out a complaint form. Um, and now it seems to be this big, huge issue about you're going to have code enforcement <coughs> and all this kind of stuff. If that person can see it visually, um, can't that person see it visually if it's cleaned up? I mean, it, it, you're not uh, the city employee. I mean, give the guy a couple extra dollars. I mean, uh, all the money that's going out for other people to do that. Just go check. Just go look at their property. They just don't think they're the guy that you're playing. Yeah. It's not a big deal. I mean. Well, I think in this case, where we're saying in the courtesy letter, you said contact City Hall when it's mm -hmm. done. We'll schedule a time, mm -hmm. and that's more of a friendly meeting at that point, right? right? Yeah. And so you're coming out, you know, it doesn't matter if it's if the mayor is doing and, it or somebody. And, at that and, point, it's like, hey, look, we're good to go, and then there's no confrontation there, really. Correct. Yeah, that's and right. can so um, that could work out. Can one of the council people, once that letter, once they come in and say, hey, this is taken care of, can one of us go out there and do it? If you want to put yourself on the chopping block. <laughs> if they've come out to invite it, I don't have a problem going Your out Your legal check counsel it. would recommend that you don't do that. Okay. But that doesn't mean you can't. The, the legal count, legal counsel has recommended over and over again that counsel stay out of those decision process because your job as counsel is to set the laws and set the regulations and then the mayor's job is to take those laws that you set and implement them what if, with the public. What so if it's we, more of an administrative job to do that. But you want to keep your counsel. What if we had like that. a member of the park board or planning, planning yeah. or something like that? Mm -hmm. Someone that likes I mean, of abuse? Like Polo. He'd be great at that. How about planning? <laughs> As a Polo could get a letter. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I don't think he'd be great at it then. <laughs> the hard part of the planning is that it's somebody from in the community. Yeah. And it, it's recommended, again, it's a recommendation that you get somebody that's not personally connected to the community. It's so outside of the community that doesn't have their own attached. personal ties and oh maybe more lenient here and oh I don't like that guy so a little tougher there. When they go home so, they don't have to be next to the neighbor they, they just served a notice to. Right, right. So, so to be wise you would want to pick somebody who's outside of the community but you don't have to. That doesn't mean somebody in the community couldn't do a good job. I'm sure somebody could and still be unbiased but so for that fact, I know that um, um, my private investigator friend, he does things like that down in Vancouver. So maybe there's a private investigator 
that we can hire to follow up on those things. Yeah, now we're now we're yeah. spending lots of money. Yeah. Um, what, well, okay. So say somebody from the Get Her Done group. Mm -hmm. Okay, somebody from the Get Her Done group. Still, it's a local person. Well, it's just a drive by, right? You just want to see if the grass is gone. You're just gonna drive by their house. Or if those two cars are gone, or whatever. Yeah. yeah it's if it's a if it's, it's a drive by, then it's then I don't think that there should be any issue. Yeah. No. For a drive-by. No, um, drive-by is no issue at all, but there's two of you want to do that. You guys didn't want me to do drive-bys, so I don't know why you would want another city employee to do it. It doesn't have any training. It doesn't know anything about codes. It's not, it's not about codes. It's just about somebody cleaning up their yard and their junk. And somebody, can just drive, somebody drove by to see the junk and make a complaint. Yeah. They could try to find and see the job is gone. I'm out for the complainer. It's cleaned up. Driving by. If you, yeah. you complain, you complain about it, you own it? Yeah. If you <laughs> complain, okay, now it shouldn't be any confrontation at all. Well, in this case, I think the, the agenda item in the, at this point it was was the addition to the courtesy letter, right? That's right. that's the agenda and I, item. And I agree with that one. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, what exact, did you get a, a sense of the verbiage that we were to and add to it? And I have it on the recording, so I'll go back and... Okay. Obviously, the uh, code enforcement officer is another topic. Mm -hmm. um, right. It needs to. We need to address that. It's it's a big it's a big one. Mm -hmm. So, if we want to, could we make a note to put that on our next meeting, please? Yeah. Put all kinds of things on the next meeting. Well, we're gonna be busy. Make sure you're here. I do have a good idea. Do it. And they will have notice in our box. <coughs> the letters go out to. Or what the what the complaint is, or whatever might be kind of nice. You want like a report similar to what we get from the mm -hmm. sheriff's department, or just yeah, a, it doesn't, it doesn't not going to be that many. Be but any names. It could just be an address and what the complaint is, something like you know, so we we are aware. I think I'm, that might I'm be sure that's already you have that you have all that. And as long as it's a as as long as it's a drive by and it's a courtesy letter. I think that any of us, if we're driving by, can say, hey, by the way, I drove by and it's done. Mike's house, and that's mm -hmm. been taken care of. And I don't know that the mayor has any problem with doing the drive-by. I just think doing it, you know, he was, I think yeah. that probably wouldn't okay. be a big issue if you guys are okay with that. I don't want, know if I really, I've actually enjoyed, enjoyed is the wrong word, but not knowing everything that's going on okay well, to, well, to, to some extent right I mean it'd be nice to know how many but I don't necessarily want to know that that it's this person this person this person this person I, I don't I don't need, you don't need to, know, to know that my, my problem is is when uh, I'd like to I know it's public record but personal privacy well my problem is is when um, someone pops up and says oh by the way we need twenty two thousand dollars to cover the four lawsuits we've got going on right now and we don't have it, so could all y'all get together and look in that budget and find the money for me, please? There's the problem I have. Because if you don't know all of this is going on, or you look at that and you go, oh, okay, there might be a problem with that one, you're going to know that in advance, trust me. Okay. And so so that's just... the reason why I, I want to know. You can give me the address, and again, I will do a drive-by and look for myself. And So then do we just leave that one alone? Leave that one alone. No, you beware. Do you want to add three or four more to your little list? You might want to just tackle that one all alone. Oh. That would be my thought, Matt, Mike. Okay. So the direction, so we already gave the direction to, to the city clerk to um, add the verbiage of the courtesy letters. Mm -hmm. Did we want to direct uh, some type of... Um, put update. A, put put a put a, uh, update do you a, want? a list or a note or something in our our mailbox. Um, and then if you don't want yours, then you don't have to pick yours up. A, cop, it, a, co a copy. Mean, a copy of the courtesy notice. Um, Is that 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 was sent that, out? Oh, that would be fine. That would be fine. I mean, that, that that's the first <laughs> step. So yeah, that would be great. Just make make seven copies of it and sure. put one in each of our boxes and. If you want to know what's going on, come pick it up anytime during Wonderful. business hours. Wonderful. And it's not, it's not being nosy, but you know, we also put in the letter that there's people available to help. And if these people aren't doing anything, 
they need to know that there's people that are willing to help them. Okay. So. All right. Thank you. That Mark. works. Thank that you. works. It's easy enough, right? I think so. All right. Anything Last else one. for courtesy letters, or are we moving on to number eight, signage? Generic and signage. Signage. And I don't know if this is the appropriate forum to ask this, but last year the Vader Assembly of God came to council <coughs> and asked to have a metal sign made, which they did, a very nice one, and put on the um, post there at the corner of A Street. And I was kind of wondering if I could do the same for the community center. I go out every day and I strap my little sign to it and I should like to have a sign uh, about the size of the Assembly of God sign made and have a little metal sign made and put there underneath theirs with an arrow pointing down um, for the community center and the thrift store. And it's just, I just thought I'd bring it and see what you thought. Or if this isn't the proper forum or what. Where's the sign? Um, there's a big white, um, there are four by, four by fours or something, right at A Street, on my side of the street. Okay. And it says, um, I think it says the jail on it, or there's some other signage up at the top, and then um, the church came and wanted to put signage on it. Oh, okay. just, below our sign. Just, below, just below the city sign. So it directs uh -huh. people down uh, that way. To, to direct them down there. And so I was just requesting to be underneath the church. Community Center is a nonprofit, correct? Pardon? Community yes. Center is an official nonprofit, yes, correct? It is. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. So we'd be allowing a sign for another nonprofit. Yes. I think that's a wonderful idea. Because if they don't turn there, they wouldn't know that that community center is there. Right? And there's a lot of people in that community center. That, that come and go through that community center. There's a lot of the community that come in there. I mean, yeah. Were those posts for that? Were those? <laughs> did the church itself? Did they put up all the posts and everything? No, we did oh, those. No, it's our sign. It is. We already have the post okay. and the sign there, and they just said, "Can we attach our sign okay. to your post?" Mm -hmm. So it is our, it our, is it our jurisdiction, as it were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, the sign would be the same as their sign, but sure. I mean, cohesiveness instead right. of. And, and, I actually, I and I believe there's this metal, so I just go do a metal one, have a metal one done up. Yeah. Is there a comment from? I was just going to say that those directional signs to the park and everything, those were donated by the Vader Citizens League, and the city donated the post to put them on. Hmm. Okay. All right. Motion? Okay. Yeah. Hurts. Concerns. I'll make a motion that you we. You don't want to hear my concerns because okay. it's just going to make people mad. So do what you want. <laughs> no, actually, I do want to hear. No, because I'm not going to go pay a bunch of money for a sign to find out that there's other issues to it. So what's the concern? I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to remember okay. exactly. But I don't have a great short-term memory, but um, when the church got approval by the council to put up that sign, we checked on it. And if memory serves, we weren't really supposed to allow private use of city, the city sign. <coughs> but we did it anyway. Yeah. That's why I was asking about the nonprofit because... Yeah, but the church isn't really private. Not, the community center isn't really private. I'm just... I said you didn't want to hear it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry, I opened the can of worms. I can't remember exactly, and I don't remember exactly what the regulations were, but I remember talking to the mayor about it and saying, this is what we found, and he's like, well, it's not a big deal, too late, you just let it go, kind of a thing. So, I think you should do it. I think you should do it. I think it's a... I, I personally don't care, so... so it's a community but, center for our community, if they don't know where it's at, if wants to get mad about it, we can take it down later. That's what I was thinking. Well, where are we going to put the sign for the small businesses in the community? That's why I asked if it was a non-profit. I mean, How I many non-profits? We're not going to be able to put that sign up then. Yeah. Oh, the kiosk for yeah, our... We can't do it. <coughs> it can't. It would be on its own post. It wouldn't be on the city's post. But it would be on city property. Okay, so we're all good. I, I'll raise my hand. Yes. Yep. Put your community center sign up. Yes. Thank our you very our much. community center sign. Yes. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got some. Appreciate it. Um, all right, moving on then. Uh, Joe. Yes. yes. Uh, one thing, uh, 
Uh, a lot of people, or a lot of cities have a, like us, have a welcome to whatever sign. And they also have <coughs> Rotary and Lions Club and Masons and Church of, Church of England or whatever on that, on their sign. And uh, that, that might be, uh, had that, uh, had Judy sign be deemed illegal or unlawful. Uh, it might, uh, the, the fallback I'm going to suggest would be put it on the city welcome to Vader sign. I think she wants to have it there on a corner where people. Yeah, are. I, 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 I realize that, but, but this, this is the fallback position. Okay. okay. I'm not going to check into it. So. But we are okay. Well, okay. Public comment. Public comment. <laughs> All right. Moving, <laughs> moving on to public comment. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. yes. Public comment. We have Cindy Radcliffe. Oh gosh, it'd be nice. Oh shut up. <laughs> Welcome, nice. Cindy. <laughs> Turn the volume down. Um, I'd like to know why the uh, the building official topic is not on the agenda. Last week, uh, or the last council meeting, Ms. Costello asked if it was going to be on the next agenda, and it's not. Several council meetings ago, the mayor was directed to go out and get more information, mm -hmm. bring it back. Um, no report's been given. I realize he hasn't been here the last couple, um, but he I know he's been in town. He could have given a report to the clerk or to any of you people. Um, I don't want this topic to fall into the black hole and just fade away, because I know last June, uh, Mr. Daly asked, the clerk to get more information on finding a less expensive option, and that fell into the black hole. Now we're all talking about it again, and now three or four meetings have gone by and nothing's been done. It's no longer on the agenda. So I'd like to know what you're going to do about it. You all know my feelings about um, our current building official. I don't. I think he's too expensive. I don't think he's qualified for the position. So I think something needs to be done, and if the mayor can't make it to the meetings, and he can't get this done, then maybe somebody else could be appointed to do that topic, go talk to other um, jurisdictions, and let's move forward on this because we've got people coming into town, we've got building going on, we've got new people in, and we need to get this addressed and get it changed as soon as possible. So if the mayor can't get it done or hasn't been able to get it done for whatever reason, then maybe one of you five can do it or somebody can be appointed to do it but let's move forward and not let this fall into a hole somewhere and just forget about it until next year. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. You can comment. Um, I was going to comment too. After we talked, Cindy, I talked to the mayor about that specifically. And the guy that we, I believe the guy's name is Trent, does, is it Trent Loheed? Trent Loheed is the Shahalis guy that we were waiting on. Um, it's, he's still been in communication with him, but we're waiting on Shahalis to clear things up so that we can use him. And so it, it, Are they out now or no? Well, we're, the preferred one is this Trent guy. Oh, okay. And so we're trying to, we're waiting for them to get back to us on that. So even though it sounds like nothing's been done, he has been in communication with them and he is working on it. Well, that's why our report maybe last time or the time before would have been nice, um, just to let the rest of us people. And I was I was going to call you and let you know about that, but I forgot about it. So well, that's, I, that's I told I told the mayor about Chehalis at least two months ago. We're and waiting on Chehalis, not on the mayor. Yeah. No, no, no. I talked to uh, I talked to the mayor and gave him all the information that he was supposed to get with Chehalis, and. And he has, and he has. That's all been done. Now we're waiting on Shahalis. Yeah, the initial the initial communications have been made. Okay, based and follow-up communications. Well, have been as far made. as I know, it fell off into Cindy's black hole. Hey. Jill, would you like a minute? The mayor Shahalis has a black hole as well. The mayor said that if this topic came up, he asked if I would please share with the council and the community that every council meeting he has been at, 
he has mentioned something about being in contact with the city of Chehalis and working with Trent Lothar and that he has been waiting for them. Yeah, go back and listen. It's in the minutes. So in any event, in any event, he has been um, working on it continuously and there was a long period of waiting for them to finish their contract with the county before they would know if that was something that we could work on with them. They have finally finished it. The mayor just spoke with them earlier this week that they have finally finished their contract with the county. Now they are sending over the fee schedule uh, to the mayor. The mayor has not received it as of this morning, had not received the fee schedule yet to see what it would cost to have them do um, our building official work, but that is very, very close. They said that they would send it today and he hadn't received it in the morning, but um, so there will be more coming very shortly, but it has not fallen into the black hole and it has been asked about and mentioned um, at several of the council meetings. So if you missed that, I'm sorry, but... Can we put an update on it for the next... Absolutely. Next and the mayor meeting. is planning on addressing those three concerns that Judy brought up, brought up at the last council meeting, but she said she wanted the mayor to be there and the mayor's not here, so we didn't put it on the agenda. But we'll definitely have those three right. items on the agenda. Why is the only gentleman that we're looking into or the only... And what happened to <coughs> Castle Rock because, because Castle Rock was willing to share their with to us. talk to the mayor about that as okay. to why those didn't pan out. I, I only call off the top of my head. So but the general consensus is that, is that we do want to move away from the, current, from the current building official and, and it's going to happen. Okay. So. All right. <laughs> Public comment? That was more than three minutes, I think. <laughs> All right. The meeting is adjourned at 7.54 p.m.